Little wins, right? Yep. Like, I did, and there's Tom. Your play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. All right, so this is my Fox Air Aero V3 camera review. And this is what came in the mail right here. I'm actually looking at the bottom of the box. And this was the Fox Air Aero V2 right here. So just looking at the specs side by side, I think you can see they're very close. I'll just go through some of the uh, specs so we can see the differences. So I think they're both the same on these specs as far as the resolution. The OSD voltage is a little bit higher on this one. This goes 5 to 40, and this one was 5 to 36, no, 35, 5 to 35, so not a lot of difference there. Uh, I think the CCD type is the same, one third inch uh, Sony Superhead 2, that's the same on both of them. The lens type happens to be the same on both of them. They're both 2.5 millimeter lenses. As you can see here, 2.5 right there and 2.5 on the other. And uh, IR blocked on this one. This one is IR sensitive because I actually ordered it that way. I didn't get this one free. I actually ordered it. So I chose IR sensitive just to get uh, a little more light when in darker conditions because sometimes I fly in the evening. Okay, so that's pretty much the same as far as the specs go. Very, very similar. And of course this one is going to be orange and this one's going to be blue. The new one is blue. So let's get it out of the box. Oh, by the way, they gave me three of these straps. That was nice of them. So three Fox here battery straps. Here's the camera right here. And as you can see it is blue. Uh, now let's just get the old one out for comparison. So we compare the V2 to the V3. So you can see right away there's a difference in the camera mount and a tiny bit difference. This is a little smaller but the camera mount on this one has three holes and it doesn't have the inserts like this one. These inserts can sometimes pull out of the plastic and in this case, actually, I, I hear it's magnesium. It's metal anyway. So this one's metal, this one's plastic, so there's a the difference. Uh, as I said, the same lens on uh, both of them. So it's the 2.5. I don't think you'll find any difference in the lens. It looked like the same size. This, this happens to have 2.5 written right on it. So there they are. They're very similar, except this one's plastic and this one's metal. Okay, looking at the back, you can see the voltage pinouts. So the voltage pinouts are identical, so they're going to work the same way. Uh, this one, you remember, if you watch my other videos, this one would accept the three-wire cable that works on the other cameras like the HS1177, the three-wire cable could still go into these and work and it's the same on the new one. Okay, so pretty much the same. And of course they both have the OSD on them so you can see the voltage, a timer, and put a name on them. Okay, let's see what else is in the box. Instructions, of course. Open that quick. So this shows you how to use the menus and all. That's pretty nice that they included that. How to use the menus. So we got that. The other one had that too. All right, now let's see if I can get the other stuff out. There's a little information card. Uh, wouldn't call it a warranty car, but it does have their website on there. I'm sure they would replace it if anything went wrong. And let's get this box out. And, okay, there's the lens cap. This has some plastic over it. I might as well just go take that plastic off and put the lens cap on. All right, now, see what's in here. Okay, so there's the bracket right there. Nice little bracket. And compared to the old one, I shouldn't say old, but the version 2, we have this bracket right here. That looks just like that. So there's the difference. 
and they're uh, similar width but you see the blue is a little bit smaller okay put that away now one thing I noticed I did not get a menu board with this one my sample for some reason didn't have the menu board uh, I don't think that's normal most people do get a menu board with it so I don't know what happened there maybe they left it out I don't have it anyway but there should be a menu board and some wires and I'll just show you what it would look like remember this is just a sample so they probably just forgot to put it in but you should get these two cables here and I can unplug that so there's the menu board you should get one of those but it's the same as it would be the same as the V2 they just work the same way and uh, one of these cables for FPV which has the uh, audio extra watt audio cable here for the microphone and the sort of purple wire for a voltage sense if you're not going to sense the voltage that's already on this cable right here the red wire would be the voltage instead of using the battery voltage here you could run this wire to your flight battery or something to measure that if it wasn't the same as the voltage going to the camera so that's pretty good so in closing I just want to say that uh, one small difference is the microphone this one had a microphone hole right in the front right there this one did, does not the new V3 does not have the microphone hole like the V2 the mic is still in the same place in the front it just doesn't have the hole so you won't hear that wind blowing over it so I'm gonna put up some uh, flight video now and uh, it's it's actually going to be this camera compared to the uh, Runcam Swift but these these cameras should look pretty much the same it's really bad weather conditions right here in the winter right now so I'm not gonna be able to test these right now against each other but I'll show you how this one looks against the against the uh, the Runcam Swift and since these cameras are so similar with the same settings I expect they're gonna look the same they're HS 1177's basically knockoffs of that so they should work great and and do a fine job for you okay let's just cut to the flight footage and and then we're out thanks for watching So the following are just my opinions. The Aero does not have a nice separate connector set up like the Swift 2. And the Aero put the microphone in the front which catches the wind and I didn't like that too much. The Aero did include a voltage calibration adjustment in the menus which is nice. The mic on the Swift 2 does not seem as loud as the Aero but it's in a better location being on the back not catching the wind. The lens housing on the arrow is bigger, so it looks like it would catch more light, 
but from the flight video I really can't tell the difference. Mounting brackets are similar, but I like the Swift 2 bracket better. It seems a little stronger and easier to use. The Aero does include an additional clamping bracket as a bonus, although I would probably never use it. Overall, they are very similar as expected. Of course, the good thing about both of them is they do display the battery voltage on the screen and the timer. So if you have an aircraft that doesn't have an OSD, this is a perfect option. Let's go over the main settings that I used on both cameras for the flight testing. So here's the settings and you can just take a screenshot of this or pause the video